Many rotation problems require the use of rotational inertia, which is denoted with a capital I. For example, net torque for I alpha rotational kinetic energy equals one half I omega squared. momentum equals pi omega. Rotational inertia can be thought of as the rotational equivalent of mass. Rotational inertia is mr squared or point mass of m distance of r from the axis of rotation. The rotational inertia of a group of points is the sum of their individual rotational inertias. So i is the sum m sub i r sub i squared. To physical objects, which are continuous distributions of particles, this sum becomes integral r squared dm. There is a certain procedure to calculate rotational inertia. First, take the axis of rotation. Then decide how you will integrate i equals integral r squared dm. You may use symmetry to determine the limits of integration or previously calculated rotational inertias to speed up the process. You'll almost always use density to relate dm and dr. Now, the process this procedure with a long standing rod, rotate about its center, the rod of mass m, length l, and a uniform density. You know, I equals integral r squared dm. We can really use linear density. Lambda is m over l, or a small change in mass dm, over a small change in position dr, where position is measured across the length of the rod. dm thus equals m over l dr. Substitute back into integral i equals integral negative l over 2 to l over 2. This is the symmetry for the limits. r squared m over l dr. Now we integrate. m over l is a constant, so i equals m over l times r cubed over 3, evaluated from negative L over 2 to L over 2. Now we evaluate the integral. We have M over L, I equals M over L, rather, times L over 2 cubed, so L cubed over 24, plus L cubed over 24, note, it's minus a negative, and this becomes L's cancel, I equals ML squared over 12. Let's try a certain disk of mass M and radius R rotated about its center. Again, I equals integral R squared dm. This time we'll use area density, so sigma equals mass of area, so pi r, big, big r squared, so same as small change in mass dm, or small change in area, 2 pi little r, d little r. This is because the circle can be thought of as many loops, and so small change in area would be the area of one of these loops. And they have a width of dr, and 
is it's infinitesimally small, you can thought of as a rectangle for its area. In the area of this would be 2 pi r is the length, and dr is the height, so 2 pi r dr, thus dm equals m 2 pi r m r over pi r squared dr. And then simplifying this, we can from the pi is 2 little r m over, let's see, r squared times dr. This we can substitute back into the integral. So i equals integral evaluated from 0 to r, r squared times 2 r m, little r m over r big r squared dr. Note 2, 2 m over r squared is a constant. Pull it out. Integrate. This is same as 2 m over r big r squared times the r to the fourth over 4 evaluated from 0 to big R. This is 2 m over r squared is r cubed over 4 half m r squared. Now let's try finding the rotational inertia of a solid sphere of radius r and mass m rotate about an axis through its center. Observe uniform density. The sphere can be thought of as infinitely many disks, so I is the sum of the rotational inertias of these disks. Or, since they're infinitely many, it is the integral from negative r to r of one half r squared dm, where dm is the mass of a small disk. These disks go throughout the sphere. They have radius small r and r at heights x from the great circle shown in the sphere. So dm can be found as dm is the volume metric density times volume. So dm is rho v and rho v, v is 2 pi r, the area of the face is the height dx of a disk. So we have rho 2 pi r squared dx. In this case we know rho is m over 4 thirds pi big r squared. Here we can substitute for dm in the integral now, and we get the new integral. I is integral negative r to r, one half r squared rho pi r squared dx. However, r and x are related by geometry. Looking at a triangle, we can see that this right triangle has r as the hypotenuse and x and little r as the legs. So by the Pythagorean theorem, r squared equals x squared plus little r squared. We can solve this for little r. Little r equals big r squared minus x squared. Substituting back into the integral, we have i equals one half rho pi, because rho and pi are constants, times integral from negative r to r, both big r's. And since there are two little r squares, we have times integral of r squared minus x squared quantity times big r squared minus x squared. And x 
You need to expand this to integrate. So you have rho pi over 2 integral negative r to r of big R to the fourth minus 2 big R squared x squared minus x to the fourth dx. Now you can integrate this. You have rho pi over 2 times r to the fourth x minus 2 thirds it comes down r squared x cubed plus x to the fifth over 5 multiplying two minuses to get a plus evaluated from negative r to r. I'm going to have to switch pages here, but that's the equation to start, which will just evaluate rho pi over 2 times r to the fifth minus 2 thirds r to the fifth plus r to the fifth over 5 plus r to the fifth okay minus a negative, two-thirds r to the fifth again, it's three negatives, r to the fifth over five, two negatives, so it's positive, and then you can notice that these are all powers of r to the fifth, and you can add the fractions, one minus two-thirds plus one-fifth plus one minus two-thirds plus one-fifth equals 16 fifteenths, now you can use this, um, rho pi over 2, so 16 fifteenths r to the 5th is, you know what density is, 8 over 15 r to the 5th times m over 4 thirds pi big R cubed, now we can cancel, and then there's another pi, cancel some things, get pi is an R cubed, cubes, and then we will get two-fifths mR squared for the rotational inertia of a sphere.